Welcome to part four of the Service Mapping Art of the Possible series. Today's session is all about top-down application service mapping using pattern-based connection. I am Bill Iflin, Product Success Technical Director, and I'll walk you through the concepts to populate and represent the MediaWiki production application service, specifically utilizing the connection patterns to build the topology. As with all sessions, please note this safe harbor statement. Here's the roadmap for today's session. Again, like we have done before, a quick review of the MediaWiki configuration CIs, and then we'll look at the technical aspects of discovered pattern connections, as well as an implementation approach. And finally, we will wrap it up with a live demo to showcase this approach. Let's start with the overview of the MediaWiki CIs. Again, we're focused on the production application service, and this stack includes applications that are running on Linux servers. In this particular demo, we're going to look at using an entry point to navigate discovery to the load balancer, read the load balancer's configuration data to identify the application server pool. And then once we identify the servers running Apache, we will connect to the SQL database. In this session, we're primarily focused on pattern-based connections. Again, this is going to highlight the process-to-process -process connectivity of your applications. We would use this for surgical mapping and it provides a granular detail, but it comes with a greater level of effort if your configuration is different. So some technical aspects about discovered top-down application services. They are managed and stored in the mapped application service class, CMDB CI service discovered and have a service type of discovered of two or empty null if they haven't been fully discovered yet. This method of population does require the service mapping plugin. Mapping is done by providing an entry point to a server with a running process. This is something other than a manual endpoint. The top level node on the service map is the CI that was identified by that IP and port that was determined from the entry point. And then connections that are pattern-based leverage real-time data as well as configuration files to find the next hop or connection. When implementing top-down discovered patterns, they're best suited for services where you need component relationships. For example, load balancer talking to application server CIs talking to database CIs, where you need that process-to-process -process connectivity. They are built automatically by introducing an entry point that gives you an IP address and a port. From that information, identification sections are used to determine what application CI is running at that IP and port. Extension sections further run to give us more content to the identification section they are best used when a customer wants to extend the functionality or find additional attributes. Once the CI has been identified, the connection patterns are attempted, and actually all of them are attempted, and they may or may not provide a connection to the next level CI. As mentioned before, they parse configuration data and real-time environment data. Out-of-the-box patterns may not always find your enterprise assets and may require some tailoring to your enterprise architecture standards. And in this example, that was true and needed to augment or extend or customize the patterns used to be able to find the connections between the load balancer and the application servers and the application servers and the database servers for MediaWiki. There are many considerations when it comes to this kind of customization or extending a pattern. You may want to consider other methods to build a quick win or do a proof of value with the application service. Also be mindful that you will require additional credentials and perhaps even pseudo privileges for accessing these configuration files that go beyond just the simple discovery credentials. 
Another assumption that is made here is that your horizontal discovery, IP-based discovery, is fully operational and is leveraging the ADM and ADME probes. It also requires IP ranges to be added to your mid servers. These IP ranges act like a DNS lookup for your mid server. As the top down discovery traverses from device to device, IP port to IP port. The ServiceNow pattern library is quite extensive for commercial off the shelf and conventional components. However, you may still require to do pattern updates for meeting your enterprise's own architectural standards or cybersecurity needs. Also, for applications that are built on these, be sure to regularly update these libraries from the store. Because of the pattern flexibility, some vendors may require additional patterns to be developed for top-down service mapping. Prior to the machine learning and connection suggestion feature, sometimes it was necessary to develop your own connection sections to accommodate your own enterprise standards. Other facilities that are available with top-down are bulk mapping with candidate identified from the load balancers. This feature came before Service Mapping Plus and is still available today. And you can reach it from the Service Mapping Home. This is one place where you may be able to leverage at scale. The steps involved, of course, requires a fully functional IP-based discovery, perhaps even the VMware probe to get a deeper topology. And you would begin from the mapped application services and in our case, we're going to select a web application and provide it a URL and also a knowledge of the MediaWiki architecture. The use of the back end definition needed to be extended in the HA proxy pattern. The MediaWiki vendor configured it with four options instead of the three that we normally look for. As well as we built an extension to the Unix pattern so that when it encountered a MediaWiki URL, it knew where to connect to for the database because the database connection was not always persistent. Let's move to the live demo to illustrate how pattern-based application service mapping with connection patterns work in action. Here on the service operations workspace, I have pulled up the top-down discovered application service. All of the connections that you see here were created with a connection pattern. That can be illustrated here because of the endpoint type that was chose to go to the next hop. Like the other mapped application services, you can see the service record one of three ways directly on the table from the application service mapping UI or from the CSDM managed technical services UI. Entry points used to be added this way on the service record prior to the service mapping UI. That same entry point can be seen here and here. Notice that web application implies an HTTP endpoint type. You're probably already most familiar with this type of application service mapping because it is one that we often show. Set it up, as you saw earlier, you add an entry point according to the application type, essentially the listening port that the application service first listens on. After selecting your entry point and updating, the map will begin to render. Based on the IP address and the port given, 
application service mapping will begin host detection and then and begin to look at the process that is running on that port. Application service or application discovery patterns that listen to the type of HTTPS endpoint will be attempted until we have an identification section that actually becomes green. The first identification section that's successful will terminate any other identification attempts and will lock us into that pattern. If there is any extension section, those are then executed as well. After that completes, the CI is created and then all connection sections are attempted. They do not have to be successful. In this method, where we're depending on the connection pattern to learn more details about the configuration, we expect a green and we do expect a created step. This will indicate that downstream connections will be added to the service map and the process repeats again for the next identification. As you see here, there are out of the box connection sections and two Ranger custom sections. This is because the MediaWiki vendor used an extended version of the configuration data that would connect us to the Apache servers from the load balancer. Typically, the default uh, back end line has three arguments after the word front end. Here it has four, and that's why the pattern did not succeed in creating a connection because once it attempted to align the front end with the back end, it was not able to take the name app as we saw here, and tie it to a backend. It only saw static, but uh, we also have backends with app defined. Due to that change in configuration, it was necessary to create a new section or a new connection section to manage that same string but this time use a regular expression that had four arguments rather than three. So we were able to find the front end with a back end named app here with our four arguments, one, two, three, four, and then able to find back ends. And when it came time to filter, we were able to match on the name of app. And then we were able to do some polishing on the name, and then we created those application connections using HTTP endpoint type. Also, we encountered a different configuration for the connection string to the SQL server. As you can see here, the Apache server was found, identified, but none of the connection sections were, were successful. That led us to create an extension section as an alternate approach to updating or customizing a pattern. Here, we knew that we were going to be looking for MediaWiki application, so we were testing to see if we were in service mapping mode, and then if the URL contained the string media wiki. And if it does, we continue to move to the specific location for the, the PHP configuration file, read it, and parse it. 
so that we can get the string for the SQL Server host. One of the reasons using this technique with an extension section is that we did not modify the out-of-the-box pattern. Rather, we extended it, put safety checks in to make sure we're doing service mapping, and then proceeded to create the connection. This gives a broader flexibility in service mapping. In our next session, I will show what will happen if we do not have the word media wiki in our entry point? And that will support our machine learning connection suggestion instead. And of course, there was nothing else to connect to after we looked at the MySQL endpoint. We were able to identify the node, but there were no further connections to be made. In a similar fashion, the Service CI Association table is also updated with all of the configuration items that are found on the map. Wanted to highlight that on the map, we have processes, the application CIs. Off map, you can tell that these applications run on specific servers. And you can see that here in the second tile in the properties. The first tile is the running application. The second tile is the server. So top down does have its benefits to be able to connect process to process, but still have the impact of the underlying infrastructure. And you can see by the number of classes that are here. One more thing before we leave the demo, if you're using ITOM Health, that impact will also be visible through the impact tree. So again, we have our application running on a server, and we can see that through the impact tree relationships. We have this Apache server running on a Linux server that's being hosted or instantiated by the ESX server. Just because it's not on the map doesn't mean that the impact is not going to have it. That is all I have to show today for top-down discovery with connection patterns. Thank you for joining and see you soon in part five.